team, the floor is yours. And it's called Scalable Startups. This is a big idea. Big idea. In Silicon Valley and in other entrepreneurial clusters around the world, hopefully Finland is one as well, there are a group of individuals who wake up in the morning and do say, I am going to conquer the world. Now, that's a pretty bold statement, given that they're living in a basement apartment somewhere. That's a joke, but... Uh, but in fact, these are entrepreneurs who believe everything is possible, and they are going to get there. And their goal typically is to solve for unknown customers, unknown features. They have an idea, but there's no real proof yet that it could be either be built or bought or whatever. Think about Twitter, Facebook, Google, etc. Rovio. Their goal is to go from a startup and become a large company. And their exit criteria is they will find a scalable and repeatable business model, but they're going to do it for a large market. 300 million euros and above. That is not the size of the company, but the market they're going to address is going to be large. Because their goal is to grow to at least 50 million euros a year in revenue. Starting from nothing, scalable startups have a vision that says, I am going to become a large company. Now in the United States, we have a series of regions where having these visions will not put you in a mental institution. <laughs> these are what we call entrepreneurial clusters. Silicon Valley, Boston, New York, etc. Where you could go and not only dream, but actually attempt to do these types of startups. Scalable startups. A scalable startup has an interesting characteristic when compared to small businesses besides its vision, its market size. A scalable startup typically needs what's called risk capital. Now, risk capital is a fancy academic phrase for venture capital. Because scalable startups need capital to help them search for the business model, and then if they find it, to hire people and grow rapidly. Now, one of the nice things that's said about areas with entrepreneurship is we talk all about the entrepreneurs. We talk about how innovative they are and how creative they are and how much risk they take, etc. But we forget to tell the story, particularly in Silicon Valley, that unless we had equally innovative and equally insane financial people, Silicon Valley would just be a lot of smart engineers still sitting in their mother's basement. The other half of an entrepreneurial ecosystem is crazy venture capitalists. If you think about who these people are, the people who finance startups, they're the people who could look at their investors in the eye and say, I am going to lose 90% of the investments I make. They will fail. Anywhere else, they would be in jail. <laughs> but it's the 10% that make it, that return obscene profits. Not good profits, obscene. Things that would embarrass your parents if you told them you were actually making that much money. They would think you were dealing drugs. <laughs> we could make that equation somehow, but in Silicon Valley and in other entrepreneurial clusters, it is not just the risk-taking, smart, innovative entrepreneurs. It's the equally creative and risk-taking venture capitalists who are not a bank, but in fact give experience, judgment, wisdom, guidance, and money to these scalable startups. So this is another group of innovative entrepreneurial founders, scalable startups. It's what we talk about in Silicon Valley. By the way, I draw this diagram as they start as a scalable startup on the left, then they grow to a large company. And for years, I believe that was the goal. That was the diagram. 
You started a company and you grew large. And if you were a founder or a CEO, that was how it worked. It turns out that there's a secret box in the middle. It's the memo that the venture capitalists never tell the entrepreneurs. <laughs> and, and, and it's this. It's called the transition, which is a polite term for why the founders typically don't become the operating executives who are running the multi-hundred million dollar companies. It turns out that if you think about what a startup is about, which is a search for a repeatable and scalable business model, which we'll talk about later in this presentation, and that a corporation, a large company, is about the execution of a model, it turns out there's a phase that gets you from one side of this diagram to the other. And that's where you build all the infrastructure. You hire executives, you start building finance and HR and all the things that make up a large company. What we now know after 50 years of technology entrepreneurship is the entrepreneurs who are great at doing the box on the left are typically hard at doing the things on the right. And so what typically happens is the founders depart. Not always, but I'd say somewhere between 80 and 90% of the time. The, the company brings in operating executives, professional management, you start the beginning of process, and you start the beginning of scale. It's a typical story. The good news is if the founders have been treated well, they have an enormous pile of cash, and in Silicon Valley, they take that money, and they invest it in their own startups. And it's an ecosystem that keeps going. So, lifestyle startups, small business startups, scalable startups. <laughs> There's another type of startup that in the last year, well, excuse me, last three or four years has emerged, which is a subset of scalable startups, and I think it's important to mention here in Finland, because I see the emergence of this here. It's in fact a subset, but let me call it out separately. It's a viable startup. Its goal is to solve for internet, mobile, and gaming apps. Turns out that the emergence of the internet and internet apps changed the financials and also changed the time required to get to market. It used to be for scalable startups, whether they were hardware or software, you needed millions, if not tens of millions of dollars to start a company. You needed to buy big mini computers, you needed to buy workstations, you needed to license the software, you needed a ton of things to start. But since the emergence of internet and the emergence of open source software, you could start a company by not buying anything but a laptop. Big idea. Two is, with the emergence of a new engineering philosophy called Agile Engineering and Agile Development, you no longer needed to build the entire product end-to-end -end and wait 18 months to get a first version of the product out. You could now get a product out in months rather than years. And so the emergence of low-cost entry and compressed development time allowed a new class of startups to emerge that only needed to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars rather than millions. And that allowed it to be profitable to be sold to other companies from somewhere between 3 and 30 million euros, and everybody's happy. And so in Silicon Valley, and I see in other entrepreneurial clusters, another class of startups, these viable startups, emerging, where a goal maybe someday is to take over the world, but you know, I'd like to have 10 million, 10 million euros in my bank account before I do that. So this allows a first or second time entrepreneur to have an intermediate goal and actually make investors quite happy uh, because they don't require millions or tens of millions of dollars. Startup type four. Uh, by the way, the, the goal is several larger companies. Right? Let me, by the way, stop here 